Good evening, Trent Tobago. It is Tuesday, 30th of May, 2017. Welcome to the Indian Arrival Day edition of Philip, Philip Alexander Live. And for those who are wondering, yes, I already have my dashiki organized for the Emancipation Day edition. So without further ado, while we build in the audience, Arrival day. Arrival day this is. And now get a break. I was just interviewed on another social media show. Some young gentlemen who doing their own show called Plain Talk. And I used to have a blog called Plain Talk. And I didn't tell them that, you know. But, but um, it, was a good, it was a good experience. So, yeah. is making such an impact on the political landscape it is, is astonishing me and it is happening at a speed that I did not anticipate we're five months old barely five months old and it's happening at a speed if you go and read in the newspapers today they can't escape they're trying to hide us from speaking but everybody is speaking now and if you read dr. Benjamin Bratt's column today I took out a piece of that column just to read a part of what he wrote and it was so spot on I thought I had to check to see did I write that the, the, we're getting to a place now where people are looking out and finding and seeing and standing up Morgan Job's article today on the prime on the prime minister but but Benjamin Bratt this is just a paragraph from what he wrote today and it says we remain locked in a colonial mindset, a slave mentality, the remnants of indentureship. It is a huge inferiority complex. In a truly independent mentality, everyone gets treated the same and everyone is proud of that. We're going somewhere, we're getting somewhere.
Amen. The Ganges has met the Nile. Let me tell you something. That man, David Rod, I keep telling people, Trinidad Tobago, we should have found a way to pay that man a salary and tell him, just keep writing. He was our prophet. David Rudder should never have left this country. David Rudder wrote about 1990 before 1990. The man has scripted us forward and backwards. And his guidance, his politics, his, his socialism, so spot on, so bang on. I will never forget the year that he just... Well, I mean, he didn't burst on the scene. He was the lead singer for Charlie's Roots for years. But that year when he won Young King... Calypso Monarch, Road March, he won everything that year. It's never been duplicated. And he stood up in the Queen's Park Savannah. The song he sang was the Hammer. If you all remember that song, this is a, is, a, is a tribute to Rudolph Charles, the Pan Man. And there was a part of the song. It changed Calypso forever to the point where the next two years, by the third year, Gypsy, throw a tantrum and sing, sing Rambang because he didn't understand that the Calypso had to change and turn a corner that, that it was possible to meld African and spiritual and Baptist rhythms. When Super Blue, then Blue Boy sang Soka Baptist, that was real music. We, we didn't follow our Calypso to where it could have gone. We've now, we've, we've squandered it, we've wasted it. It's become a political noise-making, backyard foolishness sponsored by the Balizé every year that nobody wanted to take part, take in. But I know the roots of Calypso and I remember the year when David Rudder sang the hammer. There was a time he was singing and he was singing to the whole grandstand and he was singing there was a, he, he, he this was Charlie's roots thing. He used to call um, pull along the rhythm, pull along the rhythm and he's singing and he used to channel this kind of shango rhythm and he was singing, Chalo was right here in the savannah, right here in Panorama and invoke some kind of spirit people who were watching it on tv spoke about it and and it's almost like he brought the man back to life it was an amazing experience and this guy david rudder i think personally we've never had a more talented performer artist singer writer in my view david rudder one of my favorite albums is his greatest hits album you should get it you should get it david rudder Right, yeah, today I was sent some information to, from Gerald Ramdeen. Now you all know we had Senator Ramdeen on the show before. And he spoke of the issue. You see, the judiciary is like a house on fire right now. They're trying to solve a problem by creating another problem that they have to solve that problem and it's becoming one big mess. So what's going on now is reputations and personalities are getting drawn into this insanity trying to out the original fire when the Chief Justice and the Judicial and Legal Service Commission erred in elevating the Chief Magistrate to a judge without doing due diligence onto what were the outstanding matters that she had. And it has thrown the entire administration, administration of justice into uproar because they're yet to be able to finish and sort out how they're going forward from here. And the chief justice is attempting to, I don't know if he's trying to damage control, I don't know if he's just trying to manipulate, to come out of this thing with a job. But it is my view that allowing this Chief Justice who has a vested interest in the outcomes to continue to try to sanitize his own mistakes is having a detrimental impact on the administration of justice. And now the, the, the Chief Justice put out a release that is being challenged by Gerald Ramdeen because of information by someone who was present at that meeting, another senior attorney, who said that what she was invited to... Gerald, this is Philip Alexander. You're, you're live with us. You have time for us now? Yeah, of course. The issue that's put in the public space today, Gerald Ramdeen, put out in the public space that 
one of the people who were present at the meeting says that what she was invited to was not what took place and what they said took place is not what took place. Gerald, you want to weigh in on this? Well, what had transpired is that, as you know, Philip, last week there was a meeting on Wednesday between the Chief Justice in what he called a summit. And there are a number of people there, included in those group, that group of people were six judges, three of the Court of Appeal, three of the High Court, the Director of Public Prosecution, four magistrates, and the Registrar of the Supreme Court. We were told, and the people of this country were told, that on Thursday, by a, by a press release issued by the judiciary, that a decision had been taken that all 53 matters would now be restarted de novo. Friday passed, Saturday passed, Sunday passed, Monday, yesterday, I issued, fifth, I issued 13 letters to everybody who attended that meeting, threatening to go to court and give them till 4 p.m. On Friday last, I wrote to the Chief Justice and I told him I'd given him until 4 p.m. yesterday afternoon to indicate, to withdraw that decision because it was a decision they had no power to make. Before you go yes. forward, Jared, I just want to ask you a question because some, today a senior prisons officer contacted me to tell me about this whole start over those matters thing. And he said the Prison Officers Association is concerned because this could lead to violence in the prisons. Are you aware of that? That some of these people of who had of matters course. five, six, seven, eight years running, you are telling them that their matters are going to be squashed and started over from scratch and that they have to go and find money again to try and get themselves out of jail. This could lead to violence against law enforcement. Well, I said when this issue arose at the very beginning, I said that this was the decision of the Judicial and the Legal Service Commission and the decision that they made that has us in the mess that we are in today was going to put the lives of police officers and prison officers at risk. And why should, they, why should their lives be put at risk? And to continue the story, the, the, yesterday afternoon, Senior Counsel Sophia Choate, one of the most well-respected members of the criminal bar, wrote after I sent my letter, wrote to the Law Association and said as far as she was concerned, no decision was ever made. No decision was ever made. But the press release from the Chief Justice said a decision was made. Yes. So... No vote was ever taken. No decision was ever made. As far as she understood, no decision could be made because they had no power to do that. And then we get this release from the judiciary of all places but you know what was more disturbing about that philip is this and the people of this country must understand what is passing as justice for poor people that a judge of the supreme court who has the power to send somebody to the gallows send you to your death stood up in that meeting and said let let me do, send me down there chief i go clear it up in a week for you what is that philip what, what, what wait, is that? Wait, she talking about the 53 matters? 53 matters, including capital matters. Including capital matters. For those who are now client. joining us, the person on the phone with me is Senator Gerald Ramdeen, and we're dealing with the matter of the escalation of what is taking place in the judiciary and the administration of justice on following on on what took place with the Chief Justice and the JLSC appointment of the Chief Magistrate to a, to, a, to a judge which eventually collapsed and now has led us to a situation which is deteriorating further. Sorry about that, Gerald, but people just joining were asking, who am I speaking to? No, of course, but Philip, how you have matters. The person I am representing has been incarcerated for five and a half years. Five and a half years without bail. And you are telling that person now, they must start back their matter. For five and a half years, this matter was before the, the, the former chief magistrate. For five and a half years. And a high court judge is telling the chief justice, send me down there, chief. I got clear it up in a week. Well, what if that is what is passing as justice today, Philip, from the high court? If that is what is passing as justice from the high court, so, we are in serious trouble. So if Miss Chot didn't wasn't civic minded enough because she said in her letter at the end of the meeting i would say that the majority of persons expressed the view that perhaps it was better for these matters to be started 
but no, but, but no decision was taken and we were not polled for our views. The acting chief magistrate indicated that she was not resigning from, resigning from the view she had at the beginning, but if this is what had to be done, she had a team assembled. Rajiv and I left the meeting at its conclusion. We were not asked to view any press release, nor were we told that there was going to be a press release. There was certainly no collective decision taken at the meeting. It would have been out of place for us to participate in a decision-making process. So if she didn't step out and say this, where would we be right now? We wouldn't know that a certain judge volunteered in a meeting behind closed doors to wrap up 53 matters in a week? Exactly. What, what is, is going what, on that, with the administration what, of justice in this country and who has the authority now to intervene and separate those who may have questions to answer from those who are making decisions? Well, Philip, that is the, that is the important question that has to be asked. Today, as we have this conversation, the administration of justice is in real trouble. The administration of justice is in a position where it has never been before. And where you can have this happening behind closed doors, and then what is sent out to the public doesn't represent what took place. Who is responsible for this? And how can we continue like this? This is the institution that everyone goes to every day, expecting those people to judge us. They are the people who are vested with the power under the Constitution to, to uphold the rule of law. And what are they doing? What is the position of the Law Association on this new bombshell that you have again dropped in the public space? What is the Law Association and the fraternity of lawyers saying about this? Well, let me now give you the last um, chapter in this in this version of it, this afternoon, after I dispatched that letter this morning, the Law Association responded. So let me know for the first time, because the media doesn't have this, let me now read for you for the first time what the Law Association has now said. Let me read that for you now as to what the Law Association has said. So just now, for those, like I said, just hold one second, just hold one second, Gerald. So we're getting some information literally before anybody else right now. To those who are just joining us, Gerald Ramdin, Senator Gerald Ramdin, in the middle of what is looking like the looming collapse of the administration of justice in Trinidad and Tobago. Continue, Gerald. Right. This is what the Law Association said, Philip. This is the media does not have this. This is the first time this is going out in the public domain on your program. Dear Mr. Ramdin, thank you for your letter dated 30th of May 2017. That is today. I can confirm that the counsel of the Law Association was provided with a report from Ms. Sophia Choate, Senior Counsel, of the meeting held on the 24th of May 2017, which was convened by the Chief Justice, in the terms of which are set out in your letter. So that is number one. They confirmed that what you have just read out there, Philip, is correct. At, the, at that meeting, it was made clear to the vice president of the association, Mr. Rajiv Prasad, that Mrs. Marcia A. Caesar would not be returning to the magistracy for the purpose of completing the parted matters which remained when she assumed the office of High Court Judge. As I say, Philip, at 8.18 tonight, we are having this conversation, and this is the first time that we are being told we are the public of Trinidad and Tobago are being told Marcia A. Caesar is not coming back. This is the first wow. time we're hearing that. So, so going forward from here, Gerald Ramdi, I keep saying your name so that the people who join in, because a lot of people join in the conversation. Um, so that going forward from here, the Law Association has acknowledged that senior counsel Choate's version of what took place is fact. Correct. So, Correct. so but, where does that put the Chief Justice and his press release that her facts now contradicts and bring into question? But here it is. This is what I. This is what I want to. This is when when I I have now written three thirteen letters yesterday. One to the Chief Justice. One to the Law Association. Here, where after the judiciary told the people of this country that the matters are going to be start a decision was taken at that meeting that the matters would be started de novo 
Hear what the law association saying today, after they get my letter. Hear what they say. It is our clear view that the issue of whether any individual matter will be heard de novo will be decided by the magistrate to whom each matter is assigned. And further, that said decision will be made consequent on submissions by counsel who appear before the magistrate. So, I want to ask you tonight, how the law association singing a different song from what the judiciary told us last week, Thursday? But, but this is the question all of Trinidad has to be asking right now. If you cannot trust an official release from the Chief Justice, when someone who was present at the meeting that the release is based on said that the release is not fact, that it, is, it, is, it differs from the reality as she is aware, senior counsel chose, then we have a serious problem here. But, what, but where was the law association when the if when the when the press release was issued last week Thursday, where was the law association? Well, where were they Thursday? Where were they Friday? Where were they Saturday? No, Gerald, Sunday, I, Gerald, Monday. I told I told Trinidad and Tobago that you have become an activist lawyer. I told Trinidad and Tobago that the work you're doing right now, if we didn't need you for bigger, better things, you should be made the chief justice because the work you're doing right now, unraveling what is looking like years of questionable decision making and a system that accounts to nobody well remember philip this started off this conversation started off on the 7th of april when i took a decision to have a press conference and say we need to examine how we appoint these people who are judges today after about f about seven weeks we are seeing that behind closed doors a high court judge is telling in front of the Chief Justice, is saying in front of the Chief Justice, to the Chief Justice, send me down there, Chief. I will clear it up in a week for that you. That is insane. So if, that if is that insane. Is what, if that, and you telling me that six judges of the High Court and the Chief Justice didn't see anything wrong with that? Gerald, we have a serious issue to deal with now. We have a serious problem. Because this letter from Senior Counsel Choate says, because this is what she actually said, I found no useful purpose was served by the presence of the judges of the assizes. Indeed, when the DPP, Rajiv and I were making the point that if these matters were being heard de novo, before they could get off the ground, we would require the notes of evidence of the, of the earlier hearing, we were met by a loud and lengthy discourse by Brong and Twine judge who disagreed and who went on to say that she wanted to be put down there so she could wrap up the cases. I must say this was alarming to say the least. Those are the words of senior counsel Chote. So she's about, literally... About a sitting high court But judge. she's ringing an alarm bell for Trinidad and Tobago. She is saying this is alarming. You cannot have the administration of justice. You cannot have people's cases before a court decided in a closed door meeting. But Philip, you cannot have people's lives and liberty being put in the hands of people with that attitude. How can you do that? How can we have people like that every day sitting in a court of law and that is the attitude you have to the administration of Ger justice? Gerard, what is... what? Okay, so, so the law association was sitting on their hands. They let this pass. The judges who were present, nobody put out a contradictory release to what the Chief Justice put out, were it not for senior counsel, Chote, we would have all bought this version of reality and we've just found out and now that the Law Association has sanctified and ratified it, the question everybody wants to ask is, how do we go forward here? It seems to be that the systems for the administration of justice in this country is collapsing. But, it's, 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 but collapsing? If this is where we have reached, um, Philip, it is collapsed already. So what? If this is where we have reached, do not forget, you had a DPP sitting there, and you had a former DPP sitting there in this. Who? And then, and then, after you make that decision, you tell the person who's sitting there and said, I have a team waiting. The acting chief magistrate said in that, I have a team waiting to deal with it. And then yes. you want to go on Thursday. You want to, the same point I want to come to now, which you're making. You want to go on Thursday and bring up those 53 matters with all of those prisoners down there on Thursday. Thursday is a ticking time bomb, Philip. When you go Thursday, 
you're going to take those 53 matters and it's going to come up before someone who was sitting behind closed doors and deciding what is going to happen to the matters what do you expect if you were one of those people in those 53 how would you feel but how would you feel no, how would you no, react no, no, on no, Thursday no, 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 when see? they tell you when they tell you after five and a half years philip that you lock up right and and let us not forget let us not forget that the 53 people who are locked up are presumed to be innocent eh? absolutely because they're convicted absolutely so the, right so, the, so they presume to be innocent they lock up for five and a half years and you're going on thursday to tell them well you had to start over you know so each so each of their attorneys those who can't afford a good attorney could now petition the court to vacate their matter well i i saw i see the chief justice and in the release saying the only thing that could be done is to start the novel no but to if, start over the matter based but on this it, letter now it, based on this it, letter now gerald these people now have evidence that they that they do not have the presumption of a fair trial that two different people tried to prejudge them in a meeting behind closed doors. But they, they don't. They don't have to. This is. This is not. They don't have to assume that. That is. What, that is what happened. I know. But what I'm saying to you is, if you were the lawyer for one of these people, this is grounds to vacate matters if you believe the system is broken. That your right to a free trial is in jeopardy. But Philip, there are people who are before the court in those fifty-three matters. Who have given evidence who, who the prosecution has finished, finished led their, their evidence their witnesses have been cross-examined some of them have reached no case submission is it that you are saying that it is fair to these people after their lawyers have cross-examined the prosecution witnesses perhaps bore holes in the case perhaps shown up inconsistencies right you expect now to start over the matter and allow the prosecution to get a second bite of the cherry fix all the things that were wrong when the case went to the first time in their prosecution so they now have a so short you expect that to be fair that is not justice right? again so i don't i don't hold the view that the only thing that can be done in these cases is to start them over no because i am saying that there are grounds for the permanent staying of those prosecutions and it may well be that any of those prosecutions that are that are attempted by the prosecution to go forward those people have a right to go to the high court and quash that decision. They have a right to go to the high court and apply for those prosecutions to be permanently stayed. And at the end of the day, we must not forget that the people who are responsible for all of this that we find ourselves in today still have their large egos to protect. And they still have people trying to protect, trying to rationalize the irrational. Because you see this, Philip, this is the basis upon which people should simply do the honorable thing like many people have said and resign yeah but what i want to say to you is last week okay but now it's worse now other people their reputations are being brought into disrepute i mean you talking about that statement by that judge alone seems to have corrupted this whole issue here further well, I think all right-thinking people who are listening to this program tonight, who will read these statements tomorrow, anybody who cares about Trinidad and Tobago, who cares about our country, who cares about the democracy that we enjoy every day, will have something to say about this and to be gravely concerned about what is going on. Can you, Philip, after today, after tonight, and after reading what you read, can you go to the court and expect that you will get justice? I don't think anybody is going to have faith in what's taking place in the administration of justice under this chief justice if this is the kind of thing that is going on. Well, we need to know, we need to know that not only do we get redress for this, but that things are put in place to prevent this from ever happening again. Exactly. And that is why or for, for so many years so many years people thought what happened in the judiciary the judiciary where they say what they would call it like a sacred cow you can't interfere don't ask any question what you get take it it's not like that anymore philip in 2017 we are a country that must be built upon transparency openness and democracy your letter right? your letter is a very serious letter you said 
Having regard to the contents of the report of senior counsel Chute, it is clear that the judiciary misled the public by the statements made in its press release of the 25th May 2017. That is a damnable thing to say. If that is true, Gerald Ramdeen, how could anyone trust this judiciary? Well, Philip, that comes on the heels. Don't, don't let it be said that this is a one-off situation. This comes on the heel of the judiciary issuing another press release telling the public that Marcia A. Caesar has been restored. So two weeks ago, you said another press release. You said the JLSC has met on the 27th of April. You said the, 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 the JLSC has met and decided that Marcia A. Caesar should be restored. Today now, when more pressure hits you, you're telling us she's not coming back. So make up your mind what is she really doing. You're playing with people's lives. You're playing with people's liberty. You're playing with people's rights. Who do we, who do we now turn to when the Chief Justice himself seems to be the problem? Well, who only, does this system... Uh, only two, we, only two does... weeks ago, only two weeks ago, Philip, the Privy Council said in the Dumas matter that every citizen of Trinidad and Tobago has a duty to uphold the constitution and the law. Oh, I, I, Me I and celebrated, you, everyone. I celebrated the Privy Council judgment there. But I, and, so, so. And, and at the end of the day, Philip, people must understand that they might think it's 53 matters today, but that, that person who going to court on Thursday could be you one day, it could be me, it could be a listener, it could be any one of us. So how are we going to fix this? The people of Trinidad and Tobago have to speak out. They have to speak out and say they deserve better. The they have to speak out and say, today we, today, today we celebrate an Indian Arrival Day. Well, on today, Indian Arrival Day, let us come together and say, our forefathers fought for us to deserve better. They didn't fight in 1962 at Marlboro House for our Chief Justice to mislead us. That is not what we deserve. Absolutely. We deserve better than that. When we fought for independence and we put service commissions there to protect us and fought for our constitution and got independence and became a republic, we deserve better than this, Philip. We deserve better. The people of Trinidad and Tobago deserve better than this. You said it would amount to a great dereliction of duty and an abandonment of our statutory mandate to the people of our country if the law association does not place in the public domain the truth of what transpired at that meeting. When that happens, Trinidad and Tobago, as of now, Trinidad and Tobago, the people are hearing this, they want to know from you that there is some way forward to address this. What is that way forward? The way forward, Philip, is for us to sit as a people, as we did in 1962, and as we've done at different times after 1970 and the Black Power Movement. After we, after we went through 1990, we have another opportunity to sit together and to decide how, as a people, we want to go forward. Because we clearly cannot go forward like this. There are many people, there are many people who, who want and know the way we could chart our future outside of the mess that we find ourselves in. But what I can tell you is that the people who are in charge now, the people who are in charge now at the JLSC and in the judiciary are not the people to take us forward. They have proven, they have proven that they are not those people. They have lost the confidence of the people. And it is as a result of not Ramdin or Philip, it is as a result of what they have done. They have done this to the people of this country. And they must do the honorable thing. I must say it over and over. They have to do the honorable thing and go. Because they have us in this position today. The administration of justice in our country has never been this low. Yeah, but even if we get rid of this bunch, what is to prevent the next bunch from, from sanitizing or doing it over? We need also to bring people into office here. We, who, because, we, Philip, because the position is that we need to have a structure to analyze the success of the judiciary we need to have a system in place where people are accountable. The judiciary, the judi just imagine, under this Chief Justice, under this Chief Justice, at the last opening of the law term, this, listen, Philip, this was, this ain't happened in the last two months, you know. Cast your mind back to September of last year, and here when the Chief Justice of this country, spending taxpayers' money to fly around the world, and telling the taxpayers of this country, I will continue to fly. You could talk how much you want. 
I will continue to fly. I remember that. I remember that. It's just that we have so much other things we were dealing with. Nobody expected the judiciary to collapse in a heap over an appointment of a magistrate to, to a judgeship. Nobody because you know why, Philip? Because the old saying rings true. It takes it takes a needle to break the camel's back. Absolutely. And you see, that is what happened. They didn't expect. They thought that this would have just go under the carpet. Nobody would have talked about it. Another seven-day wonder. It would have lasted a week and never. This is too important, Philip. When this you, is too important. When you raise the issue, every point that you raise is are equally important, but the one that I am most concerned about now are the 53 people whose, whose lives are held in abeyance, not knowing what transpires next. Their rights as people and as citizens are being trampled with each one of these successive plaster applying meetings. And I think that is is this the kind of thing we could could we call for a commission of inquiry into the administration of justice in Trinidad Tobago? Is that I think I think it I think it deserves the setting up of some type of inquiry. Like I said to the media today, we are in uncharted waters. We have a president who was a former judge. I think he understands the judiciary. Then let the president take some step. I am told that the prime minister reports to the president every two weeks on governance matters in the country. This is the most important matter in the country absolutely, today. Absolutely, absolutely. This is the most important matter because if the judiciary falls, all of us fall. Absolutely. So, if the judiciary falls, the democracy that we know as Trinidad and Tobago, we will be, we will end up as though we in Caracas, right, ten miles away. When is the when does the law association meet on this? The, the, well, on Thursday. On Thursday, the Law Association is meeting at a special general meeting on a motion to express a view of no confidence in the Chief Justice. What happens from there if that motion passes? If that motion passes, then we have to see traditionally, then if if the if the profession expresses a vote of no confidence in you, then you know what you're supposed to do. But if you if he doesn't step down, if he is as arrogant as he, he was when we were talking about flying and miles. Is, are there ways and means to impeach him? I said the day that Marcia Caesar is, is Caesar resigned as a judge of the High Court. You know what I said? It, as a judge of the High Court, you have security of tenure. You have a you have protection in the Constitution that they cannot remove you. You have protection in the Constitution. Section one thirty six is the only section that you could be invoked to remove a judicial officer, and it is because of public pressure. It is because people rioted in the prison. It was because of what took place in the public domain and conversations like this that caused a sitting judicial officer to resign after two weeks. You, we always learn, Philip. Those of us who understand the Constitution always learn the power is in the hands of the people. And people mustn't underestimate the power that they have to speak out and to voice their opinion, to do what you do every day, to exercise free speech and to speak out about things that affect you. Because you wouldn't want to end up before a judicial officer who says, I will clear up a list in one week. Listen. You don't want that. And we don't deserve that. As I and said, therefore, at the end of the day, if he doesn't want to go, we must make him go. The country, we have the power to make him go. You yeah. know why? He's there to serve us. We are not here to serve him. People get that wrong all the time. They are there. Public officials are there. To serve the people of this country. Absolutely. It agree. is not the other way around. We say that every day, every night on this wall, and I absolutely agree with you. Gerald, you're doing human service. You're charting us into uncharted territory. We are we are now adrift because we don't even know what is the next step here to deal with a situation that is clearly untenable. It cannot go forward. And and Philip, it gets worse because when you finish when we finish vote on Thursday, on Friday morning at eleven o'clock. In the High Court, the JLSC is going to be brought before a High Court judge because they fail to comply with the law. When Senator Sturge sent out his FYA and said, I want to know who are the people who apply. I want to know what the marks are. I want to know where will you get this procedure from. The JLSC didn't even bother to reply. Wow. The, the Freedom of Information Act says you must reply. You must comply with the law. You must give a response within 30 days. So we have... If you don't want, if you don't want to give a response, say why. And you, you have, you don't have, you haven't treated a member of parliament 
with the courtesy of an acknowledgement. So we have an and you, you are the justice. institution. You are the institution that is constitutionally mandated and vested with the power to appoint judges. And you wondering why we in this position today? Jared, thanks a lot for all of this. Again, thanks a lot for all that you're doing. Keep us in the loop. I will keep Trinidad informed as much as possible, as much as is in my remit to do. You have, I told you, you have my unflinching support. You're doing no, but human Philip, this service. Is the, what I want to cut you across and say this is the one issue that is not political. This is an issue that goes to the root of how we operate as a society and as a democracy. We must all come together, whether no matter what creed, race, religion, ethnicity, belief, it doesn't matter. This cuts across all of those boundaries. I think because Trinidadians, at the end of the day, this affects all of us equally. I think Canadians are aware, Jared, and I want to tell you something. You are in a position, you're leading the charge, and you are in a position to come back to us and tell us, look, all of our normal, legal, rational um, attempts, legitimate attempts at a resolution are being frustrated because we marched for Section 34 and we could march for this again. We could march because the Constitution, I keep telling Trump to be able, before it, re it recognizes the courts and the Chief Justice, the Constitution and Republic of Trump to be able recognizes the people first. And the people need to be able now to stand up and demand better. And, and you have to keep us in the loop and to guide us as to where we go from here. Philip, Section 1. Section 1. The first section of the Constitution says Trinidad and Tobago shall be a sovereign democratic state. And the Privy Council has said one of the fundamental pillars of a sovereign democratic state is an independent judiciary that can uphold the rights of people. And if we don't have that, then we have nothing. Then we're in trouble. We are empty. We're in trouble. Thanks a lot, Gerald. I will Keep be, up the good work, Philip. I, I'll be talking to you again as these days... These next few days progress. These next few days are going to determine you, how we move forward. As long if as we move forward, as long as you have the time, forward. as long as you have the time, the, the listeners gonna want to hear your updates. So as long as you have the time, you will let me know, and we will make arrangements for you to come on the show. Yes. Thank you, Philip. Thanks a lot, Gerald. Take yeah. care. Senator Gerald Ramdin, do <laughs> what to tell you? You you're being told. That the people charged with the administration of justice flouting the rules of justice. We in a dark place. We in a dark place. One people under one flag, that's the goal. My ancestors come from the far-flung corners of the world. I mix breed, half-breed, quarter-breed, anything you want to say. I have Arabic, Indian, Chinese, Portuguese, Syrian, Lebanese, African. I have, you name it, I have it, sharp sand and red sand, I have that too. And I, I told you this morning, 
all of our people felt the sting of the salt we felt the heave of the waves the anxiety of going somewhere that we have no idea where we were going some were captured and sold some volunteered and were tricked some were brought in by the seat some were said they were going to a and they were dropped off in b all of our ancestors this is a rival day all of our ancestors some escaped some couldn't stay where they were all of our ancestors had to start over here in this land carve a life carve a life we created a whole culture of people on a dot in the island uh, on this island in the caribbean sea and we've allowed a handful of politicians fronting some greedy nasty businessmen to divide us and to make us see ourselves as race first how foolish can we be throw that away that's not working for you it working for the people who stealing somebody say let's get an ancestry month an entire month dedicated to highlighting all of our ancestors colin hamilton said let's set up museums to the ancestors in tobago in Trinidad, south central set them up let's celebrate it a whole month imagine watching tv and again little videos of how people come from india where they start from africa syria we've had i talked to people today who escaped hitler from poland came here the jews we had chinese authentic chinese people the chinese association representing them for decades longer than we independent we need to come together one people under one flag and celebrate ancestry day all of us together pilau curry chow mein spaghetti everything on the same plate let us evade the future that these people cut in for us change it one people under one flag Again, some nice WhatsApps and texts. Whether you're Hindu, Muslim, or Christian, let's walk this man hand in hand. We go down the cross, but if we try, a charging man. Brotherhood of the boat. That's what we are. A brotherhood of the boat. All of my ancestors stepped off of that boat confused. All of them. There was no nothing, no running water, no house, no street, no electricity, no Wi-Fi, no telephone, no bank. There was survivor dead. That's what all of our ancestors dealt with. And they survived that and tried to send us forward into the future for us to be engaging in bullshit, racist politics. You think when you go into the hospital and you need blood or a kidney or you need help somebody to save you, you give to ask what that person raises? Stop the foolishness. Stop it. Look around you. If you are surrounded by people who are their race first, you're in the wrong place. This is the multi-ethnic rainbow nation of Trinidad and Tobago. We need to be celebrating that. Celebrate it. Yeah. If you want to call 682-2110, have your say. Things beat hot. PTSC. Controversy is brewing at the Public Transport Service Corporation. This after a letter sent by the Minister in the Ministry of the Attorney General Stuart Young to the Public Transport Service Corporation asking that they award payment for contract services to various contractors although there was no tendering process in place this after a letter sent by the minister in the ministry of the office of the attorney general Stuart Young to the public transport service corporation asking that they award payment for a, for contract services to various contractors although there was no tendering process in place Stuart Young 
What is going on, my brother? What is going on? There are many questions about contract services and the possible awarding of payments by the PTSC to entities that never tended for the job. And now this letter sent by Minister and the Attorney General's office to a young has further fueled the fire as he's recommending that the PTSC pay out the money in the absence of formal contract documents to the following contractors. Allied Security Limited, Elida Management, HR Technologies, and Christopher Lewis. Young in his letter dated April 25th, the chairman of the PTSC board, Edwin Gooding, indicated, open quote, it is apparent that there were some shortcomings in the procurement process exercised that led to the award of said contracts. Sawyer, how does Stuart Young be writing the PTSC to pay contracts that there were no tenders and Rohan Sinanan is the Minister of Transport responsible for the Public Transport Service Corporation. What the fire truck is going on in this country? Anything goes? Hello, good evening, you're live. Hi, good evening, Philip. How are you? Well, uh, frustrated as everybody else. The, the, the judiciary has been always been playing games with the citizens of the country. How many years have these judges, lawyers, magistrates been just sending people back and forth riding the amalgamated bus for what? For them to gain money? We have a serious problem. We need a commission of inquiry into the administration of justice in this country. And we need, yeah, people, we need, a, we need a whole lot we have more to, than that. Film. No, no, no. We need to know who was doing wrong. We have to get to the information. We have to get the information. We have to bring foreign judges and impanel them and ask them to get to the no, bottom. Philip, I am saying the only, we need the president to take control of the situation. We, Philip needs to hire, hire his own, how can I put this, unit of men to go in and audit all that's these a commission. Well, well, that's an inquiry, and I agree with you. And, and Senator Ramdin agreed as well. Um, Senator Sturge, a couple independent senators called me today, senior counsels, at least two ha former high court judges. The country feeling like we need something to be done here, and I agree with you 100%. What constituency are you calling from? I'm calling from Central, Chagona's West. Thanks a lot, my friend. I had to take other calls, though. I hope you don't mind. All right, no problem, brother. You all have a good night, and people keep tuning in. PEP, let me go. Thank you, my brother. Take care. Stay strong. Okay. Sure. Hello, good evening. You are live. Talk to talk. Mr. Alexander. Mm -hmm. when, when a minister in the Attorney General office could order some, you know, some sort of check being awarded in the, in the Ministry of Transport, we reach the tail wagging the dog. We beyond that. We beyond that. Let me tell you, this is our next profit. We jamming still. This country, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, have to reject all of this now. We have to be prepared to come out and stand up for our democracy. Stand up for it. This cannot continue. Stuart Young wrote the PTSC to pay bills that Stuart Young have no remit over. That is madness. We are beyond insane now. Who do you take Stuart Young in front of? It appears from the documentation that direct requests were made as opposed to attend the process. Justification for the sole select of these entities is absent, which is of concern. The lack of terms of reference documents stipulating the specificities of the consultancy services required. The absence of formal contract. You'll hear what this thing say. There is an absence of any tender, any contract, any document. This is a soul select and nobody know why. Hello, good evening, you're live. Yes, yeah, Philip, good night. Calling from Tobago. Good night, Tobago. Yes, yeah, Philip, the events that are unfolding, unfolding very, very quickly. It's falling this apart. Is this is a very serious situation Absolutely. that's happening presently with the chief magistrate and so on. It's undermining the democracy of the country now. People can't be loving each other from far. We, not, we, you know, we need to get up close and love each other because 
The people need to get up now and mobilize, brother. Yeah. We're going to hit a wall. I don't know yeah. if people really understand that. I, I tell them, I tell them every night. I, I hope this hearing. Well, 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 this, this is, this is a, 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 a situation that needs urgent, urgent attention. Absolutely. And anyway, we here in Tobago, we standing behind your brother, and we're gonna do all we can. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate it greatly. I enjoyed your evening. Thank you. It appears of the documentation that direct requests were made as opposed to a tender process. Say that again. Say it with feeling. It, it, it appears from the documentation. You see Stuart Young, I knew, I knew I just had to wait on you, brother. I knew I just had to wait on you. I knew you were going to jump out yourself. I knew you were going to jump out, Stuart Young. It appears. Good evening, you're live. Good evening, sir. Philip Edward Alexander. Mm -hmm. I am a very happy man today. You know why I am a happy man? <laughs> because I saw this in the judiciary about 10 years ago. When, uh, con well, I have to say, uh, when a careful, eh? defendant... Just be careful, anything that you're saying, because they're quick to hold in contempt, so be careful. Yeah, 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 yeah. A defendant boasted that, that he bribed a magistrate, boasted that he had sold his vehicle and bribed a magistrate, and he had sold it a police officer, and he got off scotch-free. And years ago, when that occurred, I knew this day would come when the judiciary would publicly embarrass itself. You understand? Now I am glad that the, the public knows and that the entire of the world looking us, uh, at us on this stage and seeing how foolhardy we are, how much we play in school, how much corruption is in Trinidad and Tobago to the highest degree. I am happy. My brother. Yeah. That everybody knows now. You're, you're whining the on a sinking ship. You're whining on a sinking ship. You're whining on a sinking ship. Stay strong. We will talk later. Have a good evening. Hello, good Good evening, you are live. Yes, hello. hello, good evening, you're live. Yes, okay. Yes, my uh, my response, I'm calling from Toronto, and my response to what's going on with the judiciary, as uh, Senator Ramdin pointed out, is, oh my God, I this is where we reach. No wonder why he was traveling all over Africa and applying some of those African dictatorship rules where, where, where justice is sold and bought, like Nigeria, Zimbabwe, and the number of Zimbabwe used to be Rhodesia. <sighs> My, my friend, he is going to find out that that can work in Trinidad. That Trinidadian people are not going to take that. Well, we will see. We're going to see because now we have to mobilize. Now we have to mobilize. Thanks for your call. It appears in the documentation that direct, direct, direct requests were made as opposed to a tender process. In, on, on, during 9-11, Remember the, when the planes crashed into the building? I watched it over and over for days and my mind couldn't process a plane deliberately crashing into a plane. I'm seeing it happening and my mind couldn't process. I can't process what, what they're saying here. It appears from the documentation that direct requests were made as opposed to a tender process. Well, this is do what the hell you want, Lan. Stuart Young, you can do what you want. You could do what you want, son. Carry on. Come on. But despite these glaring concerns, Young stated that the contractors should be paid since they had provided the service, saying, open quote, it may be difficult to have these arrangements set aside on the grounds of illegality. In light of this, contractors should be paid for their outputs once the board and management are satisfied with the quality of safety. Let's say that differently, Stuarty boy. Stuarty boy, I want to tell you something. You know, I was waiting on you. I was waiting on you to jump out, Stuarty, because I know I am an excellent judge of character and the whole bandit clan seem to have left you behind. The rest of them romping and I say, what's going on with Stuarty? Stuarty jumping late because you and I used to chat. I want you to understand my bona fides where you are concerned. 
Because people would remember, I am the man who bust the whole fire engine over the cliff thing with Jack Warner and the rest of them. I was the one who put that in the public space. And they couldn't keep up with me as they make a claim and a statement as that this is what it was. We provide video to prove they were talking run, raw, unadulterated bullshit. So I hired an attorney. Stuart Young was that attorney. Stuarty boy and I dealing since then. But Stuarty, I was waiting on you because you see when you jump on that ship, I know, I know it come in. This is what it says here. It may be difficult to have these arrangements set aside on the grounds of illegality. That means you know that it was wrong, but the work done. It's like somebody breaking your house and iron your clothes. In light of this, contractors should be paid for their, for their outputs once in board and management are satisfied with the court. Trinidad, here what to do. Tomorrow, go to work. Go, if you go to the bank tomorrow and they have 12 wickets and only three have tellers, jump over the counter and take up a teller space and start to work. At the end of the day, they have to pay you. Especially if the supervisor is satisfied with the quality of your work. Or if banking is not what you like, go in a restaurant, jump over the counter and start to flip some burgers. You have to get paid. Just make sure, tell them, Stuart Young, Minister in the Office of the Attorney General of the Royal Imperial Majestic Banana Republic of Trinidad and Tobago said, once the quality of the fire trucking work is correct, pay me. Yeah? Close quote. General Manager of PTSE, Ronald Ford, told TV6 News that he had no part in the engagement. The General Manager said, pal, not me. Not my circus, not my monkeys. I'm not dealing with Stuarty, and I'm not dealing with Stuarty contractors. Good job, Mr. Ford. What we did is to uh, seek the advice of the, the, of the uh, permanent secretary, who is the accounting officer, where he has to live for the PTSD, right? Who, who we, we go to in these matters, you know what I mean? So when they, the contract arose, we wrote to the chief permanent secretary, so the permanent secretary is guided. You know what I mean? The chief of the took his statements for that. And that is the, um, that is the response that, that we got. The final decision he indicated was now in the hands of the PTSC board. Let me tell you, Hunter Bego, something. It's a matter of time before a mark boss on the same port authority under Rohan Sinan's empire of bullshit that takes taking place on the nation's port. Two PNM insurance companies brace for it, you know. Brace for it. I sit a, a situation like this. A situation. But what I tell you, I sit down here and I'm biting and I'm waiting for these sons of bitches because I know what they're capable of. The board, is not, the board has made a decision on this matter thus far, right? And until the board pronounces on it, I can't, I can't. Um, in the, in a position to be kind of the general manager of the Public Transport Service Corporation is basically saying the fire trucking board has usurped his authority and running the show. And what are you doing? Devan Maharaj, former minister and former PTSC chairman, accused the government of double standards. He is instructing the PTSC to go ahead and proceed with payment despite the, def the deficiencies in the procurement process. When you juxtapose that with what's going on with EFCL, as in the headline of the Express today, you see well, government policy uh, appears to be... Do you want to hear no more? Do you want to hear? And Devon Maraj, Devon Maraj come to give an opinion. I don't want Devon's opinion. I want that t-shirt that say, yes, we business. We business. We need a business. While you're distracted with foolishness and arguing about nonsense, property tax in your gar, the boy. We jamming still, yes?
Jay-Z, turn up. Revelation. Are they ready? Are they ready? Talk your talk. Bullshit like I'm not really into politics. Politics into you. Politics into you. Don't be into politics. Politics taking care of the value of the money in your pocket, your work, your job, the teaching, the school. Politics into everything about your life. Politics into the banks and how the banks raping you. Politics into the, into the cost of the food that you can't afford to pay. Politics into the light bill and the light bill that you can't be rising again. They're going to raise it twice more before they sell the electricity generating company. Politics in the water that you're paying for that not coming in your pipe. There are people in this country three months now, they see a drop of water. Politics in the general hospital. Hush your mouth, hush your ass, sit down on the hard bench, take a number and wait. Politics and all of that. You know how to be in politics? Politics and you. Talk your talk. <laughs> My parents don't have internet and computer and phone and thing. So I just have to go by them the next day and play the video for my mother to hear to see if she approve. Because last night I played Lord Funny singing about the use of a word and he explained the use of the word jackasses. I said, Mommy, look, Calypsonians telling you what it's for. She wasn't impressed. I want to tell China and Tobago something, eh? All this fire truckery taking place as leadership is bullshit designed to distract and fool you while some little short men and scar faces making off with billions of dollars. You're living in a country where everything that is supposed to be yours and your children's has been stolen by a political financing investor class selling us bullshit brands imported from third world countries masquerading as bling and brands. You're getting, listen. Listen, I don't decide to wake up and save it or bend over and take it, but that is your choices. That is your choices. And the things that you, they're using to distract you right now, when it run out and they have no more distraction to get, and the cold hard slap of reality take you, you got to deal with it on your own. Because the rest of us who call in you to say, stand with us, we ain't going to be standing with you. Who will be here to stand with you? Look around. Every part of this, everything is in crisis. It is in failure mode. You know why? The bullshit that used to be allowed when the Guardian and the Express used to take their advertising, 95% of the revenue comes from the government. So what the government tell you, you don't want to lose that government revenue. Ask the Minister of Communication every Monday morning when I used to go and drop in my column in the mirror, Maxi Coffee, this son of a bitch used to be asking me, oh God, beg Gary Griffith now, beg Gary Griffith from some Ministry of National Security advertising for the mirror now. This is how they live and this is how they work they all know so the guardian and the express used to tell you what to think now social media has broken those shackles and opened the cages of your minds you have the ability now to have information and to share information what you do with that information that's the thing so all of these paper tigers and dapper dons that are big position puppies in the country that make it a mess and a mockery of the democracy. It is time that the employers, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, say no more. It is time to fire from a side. You have to decide. You heard Senator Ramdeen. He is saying it to you. These people, lawyers in this country, make millions of dollars. You don't even have to hear their name. A man of his talent and ability could borrow himself down and be making it by the hundreds of millions and you would never know. He is standing with you. Stand with him. It is time for 1.3 million activists to stand up. We need to rebuild and redevelop Trinidad and Tobago into a country that works. Not this 
bullshit that being masqueraded and passed off because while we're pretending and we're fighting and we're arguing and we're talking race this and rape that the political investor financer class and their devious greedy friends the lawyers and the accountants and the professionals and all of those who make it possible for these criminals to succeed and to thrive are making fools of us all it is time pbtrenbago at gmail.com if you need somewhere to land land here come by us go and join with with felicia and abby smith and giselle and ken abby smith and, and ken and, and michael in tobago go and join with, with, with felicia and giselle and and dilworth and ali g in trinidad let us build a party that could stand firm you have the best people, the right people being assembled, they need your help. We don't need no big contractor money and big corporate conglomerate owner money come to control the party. You have to help. You have to get involved. pptrenbago at gmail.com. Send them an email now. Sign me up. Yes, we have a country to save. Thank all of you. Happy Indian Arrival, Indian arrival Day. See you all tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Stay safe, Trinidad Tobago.